Welcome back to the lead. The breaking news this hour, the crash of an Egypt air jet in the Mediterranean Sea. The U.S. is now working on the early theory that a bomb may have blown this plane up with 66 people on board. Next comes the investigation. And joining me now to shed more light on that is Congressman Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thanks for being here. Pleasure. So, um... U.S. officials believe that it's likely that it was an act of terrorism. They say that they're not sure yet, but, but it's likely they believe. Why? Why do they think that? Well, in fact, I think some of those officials who have been quoted are getting ahead of themselves. At this point, we still can't corroborate uh, either the theory it was terrorism that brought it down or that there was some structural problem with the plane. Uh, certainly the backdrop uh, is suggestive of terrorism in the sense that we had the Russian plane in Sharm el Sheikh, uh, and we have the aspiration we've seen time and again not only of ISIL now, but of AQAP, still very potent, still very determined to bring down aircraft. But the reality is we don't have uh, hard evidence that this was terrorism yet. Uh, we don't, for example, have either wreckage to examine or uh, photographs that are dispositive or signals intelligence that are specific. So while we all have suspicions, I think it's premature to say that is the lead theory. Even before this accident, and this accident notwithstanding what caused it, do you think that security at airports in Europe is adequate? Well, I still have real concerns about our security at home, and I think our security is the best in the world. Uh, they have tried uh, before Paris, after the Paris attacks, to harden the defenses at those airports, uh, to take a, a second look at airport employees, to look at access to aircraft of people who work at airports. They just had to fire a bunch of employees a few months ago for suspected ties to extremist groups. Exactly. Uh, so they have taken steps. Uh, if, in fact, this turns out to be terrorism, then uh, I think it ought to call on us, and probably regardless of what happens, to re-examine our own safety procedures. And I know people are right now frustrated with the time of getting through security. The challenge for us is to make sure we have the best defense possible, but we're not having excessive delays that are unrelated to security. But I'm still concerned, frankly, with uh, the fact that we don't have a better track record when we test TSA going through security. Uh, and I, I still think there are vulnerabilities in terms of airport employee, vendor, access to aircraft without a thorough vetting of all those people with access. There are a lot of Americans out there who are wondering, and again, we don't know that this was terrorism, but even if it weren't, there have been a number of major and, and horrific acts of terrorism in Europe in the last year, in France and Belgium and elsewhere. There are many Americans who wonder if it's safe to travel to Europe. What do you tell them? I tell them that I, I still go to Europe. Uh, I brought my family to Europe just uh, about a month and a half ago. I and it's just that. you. It's not Secret Service agents surrounding you. It's just, just me. Just want to make sure the viewers uh, know that. Yeah. My family, my wife and kids, uh, I felt it was safe enough to do that. Um, there is certainly risk. Uh, there are people uh, within ISIS that are plotting. There are foreign fighters within Europe. Uh, but I think we all have to put those risks in perspective. I always say that there's a greater risk every time I get on the L.A. freeway uh, than whenever I get in an aircraft or I go to somewhere like Europe. Let's take a look at, at the list of previous stops that this specific aircraft made uh, before arriving in Paris. The day before, the plane had been in Cairo, in Eritrea, which is in eastern Africa, and in Tunisia. Do those places ring any bells for you? Well, absolutely, and, and really up until now, and, and again, we're awaiting the results here, but our primary concern was in airports in, airports in just those places. Right. Uh, you know, coming out of the Middle East, out of North Africa, uh, we had a lot of questions about airport security. We've tried to work with our partners overseas to help them harden their defenses. But if, in fact, uh, this was an explosive not placed in one of those places, but uh, placed on the bomb in Paris or a passenger that got through security... Uh, maybe with one of these uh, bombs that's more difficult to detect, and AQAP has never stopped working on those. If that's the case, it says a lot more about uh, ISIL or al-Qaeda's capabilities. Uh, it says a lot about the work that we have yet to do to harden our defenses. Uh, that would be a quite a shocking conclusion. We haven't heard a lot about AQAP, al-Qaeda, in the Arabian Peninsula in, in a while. ISIS has really been in the forefront of... of media discussions and Americans' fears. But AQAP is still very, very feared, and there's still a lot of concerns about it among American national security officials, specifically for their bomb-making ability. Absolutely. Uh, they still have the premier bomb makers in the world, AQAP. Uh, and although they have been eclipsed in the news uh, as of late by ISIL, they're still very active. In fact, they have more territory 
than in a long time in places like Yemen, although they just lost al Mukalla. But nonetheless, very lethal, very determined to attack. The only reason I would say that AQAP or al-Qaeda is a less likely suspect of its terror than ISIL is the fact of the choice of an Egyptian aircraft. Uh, that is, I think, more of a target for ISIL, perhaps, than AQAP. AQAP, I think, is much more interested in blowing up one of our aircraft. Uh, that doesn't make it impossible, but I would put ISIL at the top of the suspect list if this was terrorism. All right, Congressman Adam Schiff, good to see you as always, sir. Thank Thanks, you so Jay. much.